Hi everybody, I'm Professor Eric Larson from the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth, uh, in the state of Massachusetts. It was great to have spoken at the at St. Mary's College the last week, and thanks to everybody for supporting that and the Institute. I thought it was a great conversation, um, and there's lots more to say. So today's topic is globalization. That was the topic of the um, talk. and. Um, my research has something to say about all those things and, and a lot of other people have researched these topics. So my work has been building on, on their work as well. And so um, in particular, I focus on the different movements that emerged to contest what was kind of taking shape as globalization in the, in the last 40 or 50 years. And the, some of the scholars that I kind of build on in doing that work include um, people like uh, uh, sociologist Janet Conway, um, also kind of critical race theorists, uh, um, women of color feminists and third world feminists who have done a lot of work on the identity of social movements and how it's influenced by bigger structures including imperialism and colonialism. Uh, Stuart Hall on the identity of kind of what identity people take on when they try to contest something as like a social movement. So those are some of my influences. Um, and there's more, but my work in particular looks at, you know, some of the differences between these movements in the U.S. and Mexico. In Mexico, one of the things that we see is that farmers really led this stuff. Um, farming is not only a major economic enterprise in Mexico for millions of people, uh, millions of small producers, but it's also very politically and culturally significant in that Mexico was the home of the first major social revolution of the 20th century and in that revolution people like peasants uh, really toppled the existing political orders took power in new ways in ways that are really interesting and still kind of live on today so that's something to say in the u.s there were also farmers involved in these kinds of movements but maybe not to the extent as in mexico um, another thing that kind of gets us to the topic of what even globalization is in mexico the a, a rich debate uh, took shape in the 80s and in the 90s over the philosophy of uh, the politics of neoliberalism. Neoliberalism as a politics developed kind of after the 1960s that emphasized um, the privatization of public goods, um, of aid and help, um, kind of stigmatizing all that was public, and also really um, prioritizing international trade and investment, especially by the big players, the big corporations. And so um, in Mexico, we had a really rich debate over neoliberalism in these years. Um, in the U.S., not so much. Even amongst the labor and the farmer organizations that were working on these kinds of things, uh, e even amongst the kind of left wing of these things. And because of that, I think sometimes the understandings of what glo globalization even was in the U.S. was kind of limited. Um, it wasn't tied to this broader philosophy of neoliberalism. Rather, it could, could sometimes only see the kind of corporate without associating the role of corporations and the growth of corporations and the power of corporations in these bigger structures um, that include the state, that include culture, et cetera, that include race. So um, that's, those are a couple things. Um, also, my, my research really looks at the working class organizations and how they contested these things in the U.S. and also in Mexico. Um, and the dynamic for working class organizations who are trying to build a membership, um, who had kind of concrete, urgent demands um, that they centered, was a little different than um, students, for one, on the one hand, um, small collectives, radical collectives, or anarchist collectives, they had a different kind of orientation to this whole thing, environmentalists, um, and also the big non-governmental organizations like the Sierra Club or um, big consumer groups and things like that. So there was a lot of these were diverse movements against this thing called globalization or trying to at least redefine or recontour what globalization even was. Um, you know, a lot of my work in particular has has built on not only the scholars, but also some of the activist intellectuals that were uh, working on these issues as the mo as the movements emerged. Um, El Elizabeth Petita Martinez's um, uh, article after the big 1999 World Trade Organization protests um, in Seattle was one of those was one of these main articles that inspired um, 
myself and, and lots of other people in that article um, called Where Was the Color in Seattle? So bringing up some issues about race uh, and racism and um, kind of positioning these movements uh, in a bit more of a social context. Um, my research, I guess, also kind of points out that, you know, the these movements really emerged in the global south. Um, in my work in Mexico, looks at how some of these farmer organizations were doing a lot of this stuff as early as kind of 1985, thinking about the World Bank as early as the early 80s, and developing these discourses that later took shape, and sometimes not getting as much credit as they should for that work. Um, the final thing I'll mention about globalization is that this, this topic is here to stay. Um, it's become a, a, head, a matter of the headlines again in the last few years. Uh, NAFTA, Brexit, uh, the emergence of Trumpism has all brought these issues up again. Um, so they speak, you know, I guess my work, but also these issues in general kind of speak to, to the past. And I think it's important to look to the past um, to kind of figure out what, what the past can tell us about now. Um, but these are also issues for the present and for the future. So thank you very much.